Hello, friends. I'm Pastor Pitts Evans. Welcome to the Whole Word Podcast. Let's get right to the Word of God. Proverbs chapter 16. To humans belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the proper answer of the tongue. All a person's ways seem pure to them, but motives are weighed by the Lord. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. The Lord works out everything to its proper end, even the wicked for a day of disaster. The Lord detests all of the proud of heart. Be sure of this. They will not go unpunished. Through love and faithfulness, sin is atoned for. Through the fear of the Lord, evil is avoided. When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, He causes their enemies to make peace with them. Better a little with righteousness than much gain with injustice. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. The lips of a king speak as an oracle, and his mouth does not betray justice. Honest scales and balances belong to the Lord. All the weights in the bag are of his making. Kings detest wrongdoing, for a throne is established through righteousness. Kings take pleasure in honest lips, They value the one who speaks what is right. A king's wrath is a messenger of death, but the wise will appease it. When a king's face brightens, it means life. His favor is like a rain cloud in spring. How much better to get wisdom than gold, to get insight rather than silver. The highway of the upright avoids evil. Those who guard their ways preserve their lives. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. Better to be lowly in spirit along with the oppressed than to share plunder with the proud. Whoever gives heed to instruction prospers, and blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. The wise in heart are called discerning, and gracious words promote instruction. Prudence is a fountain of life to the prudent, but folly brings punishment to fools. The hearts of the wise make their mouths prudent, and their lips promote instruction. Gracious words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end it leads to death. The appetite of laborers works for them. Their hunger drives them on. A scoundrel plots evil, and on their lips it is like a scorching fire. A perverse person stirs up conflict, and a gossip separates close friends. A violent person entices their neighbor and leads them down a path that is not good. Whoever winks with their eye is plotting perversity. Whoever purses their lips is bent on evil. Gray hair is a crown of splendor. It is attained in the way of righteousness. Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but its every decision is from the Lord. 
Now this, um, this concludes just the general reading, but there are some individual proverbs I want to drill down on a little bit. And there are two that are separated numerically, but they're two of my favorite proverbs. I'll read them to you. To me, they're on the same subject, even though there's a separation of X number of verses. The first one is verse three, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. And then in verse nine, in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Now, in my limited understanding, these are gracious promises for those who love Jesus, for those who uh, intend to use their lives to glorify God. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. I think that's um, a broad brush, but I think it is absolutely true, and in my own life, it's been experientially true. If you are committed to serving the Lord, if you're committed to yielding to the Lord's will, the Lord's ways, he will establish your plans. He doesn't, uh, if you if you plan to do something outside of the will of God or not led by the Spirit of God, he will not establish your plans. And so the, the other verse, verse 9 says, essentially, um, uh, your heart decides its own course, but the Lord establishes your steps. I believe that means for those whose hearts are toward Jesus, the Lord will guide their steps. Not um, not every human heart in whatever course they plan, but specifically those who love the Lord, the Lord will guide their steps. And he has certainly many times led me in this manner. My heart was um, seemingly making plans. Of course, my life is uh, devoted to the Lord. It revolves around the Lord, but I'm a mere human being and I fall short of the righteousness of Christ in so many ways. And yet the Lord continually guides my steps. He um, establishes my plans. He leads me when I don't even realize I'm being led. I love that. Now let's back up to verse 7. When the Lord takes pleasure in anyone's way, he causes their enemies to make peace with them. This one I've experienced as well. If the Lord um, takes delight in you, he will settle conflicts on your behalf. I've seen that played out many, many times. Verse 18, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. That is uh, well to remember. It's a caution for everyone concerning pride. And I will remind you as a listener that um, the devil himself became fallen and became the devil because of his pride in desiring to exalt his throne up where only the throne of the Almighty belonged. And so pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Absolutely. If pride can make a a devil out of an archangel, then what can pride do to you and I? The Lord loves humility in his people. Uh, That's absolutely the the opposite of pride. Uh, Verse 19, better to be lowly in spirit along with the oppressed than to share plunder with the proud. So once again, uh, better to to live a life of humility rather than a life of pride. Wise words in the Proverbs are told uh, to give life to the hearers. And this is played out again in verse 23. The hearts of the wise make their mouths prudent and their lips promote instruction. And so the uh, those who are wise use words carefully. And um, uh, they use their words to build up, not to tear people down. There's an affirmation for older people, and since I am an older guy, I really appreciate this. It's verse 31. Gray hair is a crown of splendor. It is attained in the way of righteousness. That's multifaceted, but it essentially means that older people acquire wisdom by living right, or if they're not living right, they're not wise and they die younger. So the gray hair is an indication that you have... um, been prudent in your life choices to live to be old. Of course, not every old person is wise. Not every young person is is foolish. But uh, gray hair is to be treasured biblically and culturally. Sadly, in the United States, a lot of times older people are liabilities. Among other cultures, the older people are assets. In the kingdom, older people definitely are assets because they know the ways of the king. They have more life experiences in the Lord and Uh, more track record of making decisions related to the Lord's will and the Lord's ways. So, Lord, we recognize 
that you direct our steps when our hearts are toward you. We ask you, Lord, to help us to plan things that you can establish, that you can get behind. Help us, Lord, by causing our enemies to make peace with us. Lord, teach us that pride goes before destruction, and humility is something that you desire in your people. Make our hearts wise. Make our mouths prudent. Let our lips promote life and not death. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Whole Word. It was brought to you by Whole Word Fellowship and the Northern Virginia House of Prayer. If you were encouraged, please share our podcast with your friends. We'd also appreciate it if you'd hit subscribe in your favorite podcast app and take a few moments to write a review. If you'd like more information on our church and our ministry, you can go to wholeword.net or wholewordpodcast.com for more information. Thank you again, and may the Lord Jesus bless you today and always.